Hello and welcome to Nintendo Nostalgia episode 170. I'm your host Ryan Black and I am joined by my co-host Joshua Taylor and we are back and we are playing with power. Josh, how you doing this week? We're doing just fine. Hope y'all are doing well. Yeah, I'm I'm in good health. Uh, I passed my two-week quarantine, uh, personal quarantine, so I can be around my wife now and, and hang out and, and everything so I don't have to stay out of like every room pretty much. I can be throughout my whole house and not have to worry. So yeah, I guess whatever I was feeling was just more of an asthma thing or anxiety, most likely anxiety. And uh, yeah, uh, I found my inhaler too, of course, after all this is over with. So, <laughs> But yeah, good health, good health. Uh, I hear your health's not been doing so great. Uh, you, you, it looks like you took a little bit of a uh, an arrow to the knee. <laughs> uh, sort of, a little lower. I, I, I was putting some stuff up in the cabinet that was already too full of stuff. And I shoved out one of these big Yeti cups mm. out of the other side, long story short. And it fell down and landed on my big toe. As silly as it sounds, it hurts more than you think it would. <laughs> <laughs> Only cried for three hours. No, I'm just kidding. It was. It, it does sting, though. But, yeah, I've been having to take care of that thing. Is your, uh, your toe sporting new colors? Yeah, it sure is. It's It's changes every once in a while it's it's kind of cool <laughs> hmm. so i guess you'll be doing a, a few uh, less walks than you normally would yeah that really sucks like today that was really getting to me because i'm I, i've I, I'm, I don't enjoy what's going on in the world but i've kind of enjoyed being home for a change and taking walks <laughs> like you know two three times a day hanging out outside and i was like stuck mm-hmm. i tried for a little while and i regretted it afterwards so. yeah uh, do you have, like, crutches or anything that you can use to get around? No, no, just uh, propping my foot up, limping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that'll... I'll be all right. That sounds painful. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is going to take an interesting uh, look at uh, just randomness, really. Um, we had this all planned out to be a Final Fantasy episode, you know, to, to release on the day that Final Fantasy VII Remake comes out. And um, the uh, person that we had lined up for doing the show uh, had to cancel on us today. So um, it was cool. Uh, so we're just going to kind of hang out and maybe talk about some Final Fantasy, maybe just talk about whatever. Um, so it's a pretty chill episode. It'll probably be pretty short, but uh, we wanted to keep bringing you content and uh, just let you know how we're doing and kind of share our lives with you guys. So Plus, we're also cooped up in a house, not doing anything. So we, we need to talk. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's plenty of game-related stuff anyway. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, without further ado, let's get into what we are Radical Rexing about. Okay, Josh, so what are you Radical Rexing about? Well, where do I start? I almost feel like I'm getting into the quote-unquote topic of the episode, but um, really I've been putting a ton of time into Animal Crossing, um, to no surprise. Uh, more than anything between me and my wife she actually has her own switch my daughter shares or is on my island um but yeah we're putting a lot of effort into that it's great to share that together everybody's sharing memes and visiting each other's islands and talking about it and all that good stuff so that's that's a good time that i, I don't feel like happens as often as it should um heck even my mom honestly that I, I can't describe how much she's like never plays games. She was like the one person in my household that didn't. And they've got it. Like they've got a copy <laughs> of it. She hasn't had a chance to play it much. She's still going into work and all that sort of thing. But yeah. Um, yeah. So that's interesting. But that, that's been, I know that sounds kind of weird, but that's, that's about one of the only things going on right now. <laughs> it was really <laughs> odd for me. Uh, but yeah, that and a few other games and stuff. Well, I'll, I'll chat more about all that here in a moment, I guess. But uh, that is about it right now. All right. So uh, for me, uh, today they had a sale on Sega games and stuff. So I picked up uh, the Sega Genesis uh, Classics on Switch. It was like eleven ninety nine. I used my gold coins because why not? And I only spent I spent less than ten bucks on it, so can't complain there. Um, so I, I've got, you know, Sonic Spinball on my Switch, which is pretty awesome. I'm excited to play that, but, uh, you know, nothing can really tear me away from Animal Crossing. So that's kind of what I'm doing most of the time. Now, there's times where I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, I want to do something else, but then, like, I'm like, no, I'm just going to keep playing this, because that's just 
I'm addicted, I guess, you know, but uh, it's a lot of fun. I, I like being able to express myself uh, creatively and uh, doing art, uh, pixel art in there and just um, kind of creating, uh, coming up with ideas. Like first thing I did in my town uh, was to go ahead and just lay out uh, posters on my wall of, of things that I would have had, like probably in like high school and stuff. So I don't know, just kind of rearrange my house, how I could have it where I can't have it here at home. So, you know, just kind of make it my own. I've got a really cool uh, Japanese bathroom and like, like pride right now. I can't wait to expand the house to get bigger rooms because that room's going to be amazing once I can get everything, you know, situated. But, uh, you know, just the general bell grind and trying to get your town up and running. I don't have KK yet. Um, I'm still getting villagers in. I did port in... Um, Cherry. I'm going to have Cherry for the first time, and I've always wanted to have Cherry just because I like the spiderweb shirt and just the red and black uh, coloration of the dog. Um, so I, I don't know about personality-wise if I'm going to like her too much, or him or her. I'm not sure which. But, uh, you know, I'm excited about that. Uh, that one should be moving in tomorrow. I thought it was going to be today, but another villager moved in. Some chicken I didn't even want in my town. But uh, the annoying monkey that moved in uh, early on had left, so that was cool. <laughs> So yeah, just collecting villagers and getting ready for KK. Cool. Um, anything else that I have going? Let's see. I've been playing some Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Dual Links and uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Nexus. Uh, just, you know, I haven't played any on Switch, though, obviously, because of Animal Crossing taking up my time. Um, I haven't been listening to podcasts too much, either. Uh, sorry. Sorry, everybody who I li- usually listen to every week. I'm just not driving, you know? <laughs> yeah. I've tried, like, on walks with my dog listening to podcasts, but, you know, they're shorter walks, and they, it's not like a drive to work or anything, so. Same, yeah. So, yeah, I'm falling behind on my podcasting, for sure, um, but I have been catching up a lot on my manga reading. Um, I subscribe to Shonen Jump, and uh, I get that weekly, and I'm just getting caught up on everything. I stopped last April. I stopped reading pretty much, like, cold turkey. I just didn't feel like going back to it. And, uh, you know, now I'm starting to pick it back up again with the quarantine, and um, I've been reading a lot more. Um, I've got caught up in my favorite, which is World Trigger, and I'm really loving that. I can't wait for the anime to start up again. Um, hopefully the uh, the uh, artist or the creator doesn't get too uh, too into it, because last time he worked himself sick and uh, nearly died. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, they work pretty That's hard on manga and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a Japanese thing, I think. It's, it's a cultural thing. Like, you just keep working and working and working, whether you, you don't really take breaks, and you go to the detriment of your health. And uh, that's just a thing that Japanese men do, or women, too, I would, I would guess. I just, you know, you don't hear that reported too much. But I can imagine the work ethic is, is pretty, like, you know, nose to the grindstone all the time, which is it's scary. Um, and I see some things where that's changing a little bit in the culture, but, you know, just not healthy to keep that, that resolve going for too long uh, but I hope that he has good health and can continue the series because I absolutely love World Trigger like um, I did a blind pack oh it was a couple of years ago and I was able to pull um, my favorite uh, character Kuga um, and it was like a cherry blossom motif and it had a replica and uh, he's like eating a dongo and it's cute and it probably means absolutely nothing to you Josh since you're not into anime or manga but <laughs> absolutely love World Trigger, and I'm h- happy to get into that. And then, of course, Promise Neverland and and My Hero Academia and some of the big ones that are pretty popular right now. So Dr. Stone's also quite interesting. I- I'm bound and determined to get Josh into anime somehow, some way. Um, but you'd have to live a little closer, probably, for us to be able to do anime nights and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But I know, I can I'm hope. not going to say it's all bad. And I pick a little bit, <laughs> to, be, to be honest. But, eh, you know. I don't know. So one thing that we're both radical rexing about is uh, we had an event. Uh, actually, had a couple events. Um, the first event didn't turn out so well. Uh, we did a Mario Kart uh, 8 Deluxe event, and uh, there was wasn't really a turnout at all. Uh, it was just me, you, and a friend of yours, I think. Uh, no one yeah. else could make it at that Cause... time that we set on last Saturday. So we're like, you know what? Let's let's do another event like. But let's plan ahead. Let's let's shut this out ahead of time before, not just like a couple days before, but like the week before. And so you organized this amazing uh, Animal Crossing event uh, where we had people come over to our islands. We had enough people to do two islands. And uh, I think, was there was there 12 people or were there more than that? Yeah, I think there was 12 um, when we got down to it there. And okay. we, we each had uh, 
Well, uh, see, I almost feel like I'm not counting somebody. I think there was 12. <laughs> Um, we had at least five on our island apiece, other than ourselves. I'm, I had six on my island, so, yeah. So, maybe it was more than that. Well, anyway, um, yeah, we were just about to capacity on both of our islands, so that was nice. Um, it, was it was cool. A, um, good number. It was the first attempt at, at seeing, I hadn't seen anybody do any kind of Animal Crossing event, and uh, the timer that you get in the game, uh, you can use that to count who's caught, how many fish, who's caught how many bugs, and uh, we did a couple other events. One of them we had was kind of a wash because we couldn't edit um, designs uh, on other people's islands. Yeah. So uh, we might have to first. do something ahead of time uh, and have someone create something and bring it to the, the table or something like that. But it's hard to police, like, timing and, and everything. So, uh, yeah. But we, had, we did an impromptu egg hunt, uh, you know, and hit a bunch of eggs around our islands. And, and uh, we also hit a, a hidden uh, painting. Uh, uh, some some kind of graphic we put on a canvas we hid somewhere and you had to tell tell the location and what it was of uh, and then uh, yeah so uh, do you want to discuss like how everything turned out and like numbers and 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 placings and everything? Yeah yeah I had a lot of fun put, trying to put that together. There was a lot of events actually that didn't really make it. Um, I, I I don't know if I just didn't um, get out all the kinks after I thought some of them through. So we only went to like four different events that we did, but I think everybody ended up having a good time. We had, um, we did a 10 minute fishing round, 10 minute bug round, not in that order. Um, like you said, we did the one where they, we had to find that hidden picture. Um, we did an egg hunt and all this sort of thing. Um, so yeah, we went on about an hour. I think it was, um, we had, we had somebody had to leave early, but yeah, it went great. Um, the winner, actually, of both, well, I had, uh, I believe it's Nordish that won on Boahala, if I can even say the name of my island, <laughs> and then you had Traven win on yours, and Traven had the uh, most points overall, so he was our winner, and uh, the trophy was something we had put together. It's a, it's a golden dung beetle trophy. It was a <laughs> recipe I had got, so it is a golden poo trophy is mm -hmm. what i called it so that was the prize well he actually and he also got a lot of fruit and different things to take home everybody got a little something so just if you wanted to set up your own animal crossing event um <coughs> what we did was uh we collected 10 native fruit from each person um 10 of their their, their cherries or you know apples or what have you and um then we started the event with the, the bug catching using the timer um, and then um, what we were supposed to do was give them time to go and sell their their fish before they started the next event. Um, both of us, both Josh and I forgot that. So don't forget that. Um, but then, um, you know, the timer, you set the timer for 10 minutes and uh, they go do that thing. Um, during that time, um, I just kind of hung out and chilled. Um, but when I realized that we had to come up with another event, um, I started hiding eggs uh, yeah. When we got to the uh, the bug catching event, I started running around where people were catching bugs, like dropping eggs behind trees and behind houses and and everywhere I could hide them, you know. Um, I, st I was still finding some of mine today, by the way. <laughs> me too. Well. <laughs> yeah, I was still finding some of the ones that I had too. So n not everybody got everything, but they only had five minutes to do the egg hunt. So yeah, so yeah there's the 10 minutes for the fishing, the 10 minutes for the bug hunt and then I did the five minutes uh for the the egg hunt and then I asked if anybody had seen the painting um while they were out hunting and um someone said that they did see it but they didn't know what it was of and uh they were a little vague on like the location of the painting uh, but then someone else piped up hey I saw it I knew what it was it was a painting of Super Metroid on my island so um that got them some points um as far as points go you can break down the points I was a little fuzzy on how the points are going to be working um I had to figure it all up um but you kind of have the breakdown of how the points went but you know just if you want to put on an Animal Crossing event this is kind of the, the, the trials and tribulations that we, we went through um don't try anything that if they aren't best friends don't try anything like shovels or axes things like that yeah. they just don't work unless everybody's a best friend um, and it'd be kind of cool for an event to allow such things, but it's just not something that that's uh, capable right now. But, uh, you know, just like the simple things like catching bugs and, and hunting for items that are hidden. Um, they're, they're great things to do. Um, now, go ahead and break down how the points worked and how everything, how the scoring worked and everything. Um, 
you know, I probably got some people confused because I'd, I'd use their, I wouldn't use their in-game name. I use their actual name, like Isaiah. And then, uh, you know, I'd interchangeably say Gombesa and, and Traven. So <laughs> I was probably confusing people with that. But uh, yeah, go ahead and give the breakdown of how the points work out. And so people can get an idea of how to run their own Animal Crossing event. Yeah, so the way I did it, this honestly, the point system was something that I feel like I kept changing up till the last minute. Um, and, uh, you know, it may not be a perfect system, but maybe this will give you a good idea at least, is uh, most of the events was first place was uh, 30 points, and then second place was 20 points, and then third place you'd get 10 points. So it kind of worked like a Grand Prix, and then whoever read the most points at the end wins. Um now, the one with, like, where he mentioned the painting, um, if, if somebody had found that, that was just an extra bonus 10 points to that person, basically. It's kind of more, I put that in there as more of almost like a tiebreaker sort of thing mm-hmm. um, to keep that from happening, potentially. Um, so th- that was that was mostly what we did this time. I had also, really almost up until the day till, to be honest, I, I considered sort of doing almost like a Mario Kart point scale. Um, but I somehow I ended up with something a little more simple but mm-hmm. um, it, it mostly worked out in the end um, now this was right smack dab in the middle of the the bunny day event right. so uh, when people were fishing they were catching eggs too uh, so we did count those as points as well um, you know kind of added up how many fish they caught and then added the eggs as, as points as, um, to kind of come up with that total um it wasn't a perfect system in a system where they aren't they don't have like superfluous amounts of eggs that you're catching in the water um you know it goes a lot smoother but we had to compensate for the eggs and kind of hold everybody you know keep everybody you know hold everybody to an honesty thing there um because we couldn't really verify how many eggs they've actually gotten but uh, i tried my best when i hid eggs to not hide water eggs i think i might have hid two of them because i was just kind of running short on eggs but i tried to hide other kinds of eggs uh for people to find but yeah, eggs were kind of a, a uh, curveball that were th- was thrown in there. We were like, oh, you know what? You know, there's eggs. And another thing you have to keep in mind when planning this, um, you can get rained out because Animal Crossing, you know, weather, like it's hard to do a bug event with all the rain going on. Bugs just are just gone pretty much. So, you know, you're kind of at the mercy, just like in real life, you're kind of at the mercy of the weather. So luckily we had sunny, bright and sunny days and no problems whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, we did have one problem um, with our fish. But it was, we didn't really, it didn't really kick in until the last third, I don't know, the last three or four minutes. But basically the fish on my island just quit showing up. Huh. Um, like it, everyone was just getting nothing after a little while. But uh, huh. it still worked out. But yeah, it was just a weird little bug where there was like, well, not bug, fish, but sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there was just no fish. So I don't know what that was about. Hmm. I wonder why. Um, now, one thing I do want to say, um, Traven did really well, and, um, he, one thing that he is really, he's really analytical when it comes to games and things, um, we, we, we jokingly call him the god of gaming just because he's, he sees things differently from other people in games and things, so, like, he was able to break down spawn rates, uh, during the bug catching contest, he knew where they were going to spawn and how often they spawned, so we'd do, like, a loop and catch bugs, um, you know, kept up with uh, just a steady flow of bug catching. That's how he was able to come out on top on that one. So uh, be keeping in mind that uh, kind of like counting cards and things like that, that might be something you may want to discourage. Um, but if someone, you know, if that's their bread and butter, they go around and they catch butterflies, you know, and eggs, like, or uh, butterflies and mantises and whatever, like bugs are their big thing, then definitely like that's, you know, they're just going to excel at that. And cool i mean if everybody knows that and can can excel there that's cool too um i'm really happy that that traven brought that to the table um that was surprising um but there were some other things other things that shook it up for him like finding that piece of art he didn't know to look for it and we didn't announce it so if anybody saw it and could tell what it was they had a chance to get some points there so that kind of put people in the in the running as well i think that that changed up uh, who the second and third place uh, person would have been uh, i think uh, so that was kind of interesting to see that change. Um, so yeah, that's that's some things like you know you can surprise with some hidden things that they can find. Um, maybe some kind of scavenger hunt uh, you could throw in there. We'll have to do some more like tweaking to make a new event. Um, we'll we'll save those ideas for uh, oh, you know yeah. another day. But 
there, there's a lot of things you can expand upon that and uh, give people uh, have a good time and just uh, enjoy themselves on a, you know, and it took about, it's about a 40 minute event, give or take. So it's not, not too long, um, but it was definitely fun to put on and set up and, and everybody was just acting funny and silly. And, and don't forget to take pictures. That's one thing I forgot to do during the whole event up until the very end where I did a group photo. Like we, I, I just didn't even think about taking pictures, which I should have done. There's so many opportunities to take the pictures and, <laughs> um, but yeah, we had a great group of people and we're so happy that everybody came out and played with us and I hope to do more in the future. Oh yeah. Yeah. And if you plan on doing something like that with some friends, keep it simple. I had a lot of ideas that uh, we just didn't use. I just wanted to try to make it as easy as possible, but there's a good bit to do. That's not that difficult to get away with. I mean, something as simple as a fishing tournament or a bug tournament, like just be sure to have those timers uh, in game. Cause those, they keep track of everything for you. Hmm. I tend to be a pretty, pretty giving person. So I, I gave out prizes and stuff on my own Island. Um, uh, uh, Joshua had wrapped up some gifts and uh, yeah. sent them to me. So I had three that I just gave to the the first, uh, the three people that didn't place. Um, I gave them one of those each a gift. And then um, those who did place, uh, third place, I believe, got, um, it was a wand, a bamboo wand, I believe. Um, and then second place uh, got a star fragment and a, uh, a uh, cherry blossom wand. And then... Uh, first place uh took all the fruit of course and then i also threw in um two star fragments and the timer that i used for the event to commemorate you know that they did the event and they came out on top uh so i gave him that and then you, you did the uh the overall between the two islands he also uh, traven also got the uh the dung beetle golden dung beetle so and um, we got some a nice uh a nice reward for winning that and uh it was it was cool to do that. Now I am currently sans any wand, and I just figured out what the wand actually does. So I'm like, I need a wand now. <laughs> I, I do not have a wand myself, but I, I did. I, I did do something funny. Is everybody got a prize regardless, just mm -hmm. along with the winner and all that. Just I had one for everybody, kind of a well, nothing big, honestly, for the most part. There was a couple that were just a little better than others. There was one sort of like joke one in there, and <laughs> one was a cardboard box wrapped up. Oh, and nice. my wife decided to join us, and my wife won the cardboard box. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that was pretty funny. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I just found out about you can get the Nook shopping thing online or, like, on your phone in the game uh, if, yeah. you, if you purchase 100 items. So I started sending people, like, the cheapest item in the shop that you could send to people. Um, is the cardboard box. So I just started sending cardboard boxes to my best friends. <laughs> I'm sure they just love that. But, uh, yeah. you know, just trying to up my count for, uh, you can only send two a day for, for each person. But, uh, you know, it's upping my count for selling so I can get the app on my phone. I thought that was kind of a cool feature. Um, it also kills two birds with one stone. Not only is it, you know, buying items, but also you're sending letters to people. So you're also getting that uh, Nook Mile achievement uh, rack up too. You know, just a little tip for everybody. <laughs> That is cool. Didn't know that. Um, now, are you, have you been taking advantage of the uh, money tree? Somewhat. Um, I, I just recently I found out, I don't remember if this was in old games or not, but I, I found out if you plant a 10,000 uh, bell bag, it grows in the 30,000. Mm -hmm. And that's um, guaranteed from what I understand, but you can go higher. You can put more in. Um yeah. Now, I know people have done, uh, you can do, of course, the maximum you can do is the 900, or, sorry, 99,000. Um, if you put that in the ground, you're not guaranteed to have a yield from that. It's a gamble. Um, but if it does sprout up, then you get, of course, the three, you know, three bags of it, of 99,000. So that's, that's, it's tempting. It's a gamble, though. So that's a big gamble. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but you know, you might you might get <laughs> richer with that. Now you might just sure. stick with the stock market. <laughs> um, I'm still waiting on a really good price. 123. I passed up on 123 today, so I'm hoping to uh, you know, hoping to go a little better. I heard that um, there was someone like Game Explain or IGN or someone um, Nintendo Voice Chat maybe. I don't know. Uh, I want to say it was Pierre. Um, Here, yeah. he he got invited to uh, someone's island and i guess they were selling for 600 and something so he just made bank <laughs> so you yeah. know th th there's a possibility of getting a lot more 
Um, I think if I see like a 200 or more, I'll probably spring on that right away. Like, you know, but 100 range, I'm probably going to shy away from maybe unless I get down to like Saturday and I'm like desperate, you know? <laughs> yeah. But. We did 175 last week. Me and, uh, and I'm on a lot with our group here, a cousin and my wife and a couple of us, but, uh, so that wasn't too bad. My wife made 600, 7,000 off of it. But uh, that took a lot of turnips. <laughs> yeah, I've got my kitchen full of turnips right now. I'm just waiting for uh, the right price. Yeah, I wish there was a place to store those. I really do, because <laughs> I don't want to do this every week. Is you know, Just trash one of my rooms to the ton of turnips. Like, you can't put them in storage. You can't right. drop them outside or ants will eat them up. Well, you can. They don't, I don't think the ants eat them up until they expire, I don't think. Do they not? Yeah, you have to wait till they expire for the ants oh, still, to do that. I don't know where I'd shove them or hide them. Um, the reason is because you get achievements for storing things in your house storage. You get the Nook Miles. And so putting a bunch yeah. of those in there would just rack it up right away and you get all the points there. Um, yeah, alternatively, yeah. nothing really expires that sits in the, the storage there and they didn't yeah. work that out. So the turnips would never expire. You just hold on them forever. So they, they kind of just cut that out completely by letting you just set them on the ground um, instead of having some kind of like knapsack that you keep them in or anything like that. It would take up like your inventory, but it would hold all of them in there and there or something like that. You know, but it's just kind of how they chose to deal with it, which is understandable, I suppose. But Yeah, I'm still needing how many um uh, room or I'm sorry, like house upgrades are you at right now? Um, I have three rooms so i'm either gonna go i think a basement is next or a attic or some some other level like second level of the house i think is the next thing unless they go with bigger rooms i'm not sure which comes first uh, i'm still paying off my my third room so or my third add-on yeah me too I've, I've got the three rooms off the main room and my cousin actually he isn't upstairs he, he got the upstairs before the basement so i think i think they had, okay. i don't know if you choose in this one or not but he had his upstairs um i feel like in the past it was your basement first or something but it's I, I think now and i'm trying to remember if it was like this new leaf i remember the original your basement was like a basement like i don't even think you could put wallpaper and stuff up mm -hmm. um but now it's just like another room so you can just do whatever in it hmm. um but yeah i remember originally it was like a just a storage kind of area <laughs> But I already have plans for my basement now. It's probably going to be my doom room. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I don't have any plans for what my next room is going to be. Um, they just kind of happened. Like, my bathroom was the first thing to really go in. I mean, I made the kitchen, but my bathroom was what I really started to flesh out. And I've got, like, a game room, but it doesn't have anything in it right now. Just a couple things here or there. But it's not really fleshed out or, or made into my own, like, thing. And I need to create some more furniture and things, but I'm just too busy collecting bells and earning stuff that I haven't gotten there yet. I do play my game room. I hear there's arcade machines. Have you seen those? No, I haven't. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a couple switches, and uh, I've got the board game, and then uh, my main my main room. I have a puzzle sitting on the floor, but but yeah, yeah. there's there's a bunch of different games that you can use for that. Um, I like that the the board game that you get. You can hit a and it'll like roll the die on the board. That's fun. I don't think I noticed that. I have one in my living room, and I don't <laughs> think I've ever noticed that. You know, my main room. Cool. So um, my bathroom, it's my pride and joy. I've got the uh, the cherry blossom floor, and then I have the outdoor uh, like bath, like the Japanese bath style. And I've got one of the uh, the deer scares, uh, the little thing fills with water, and then you know dumps the water, then clicks on the makes yeah. a clicking sound, and then. Um, I've got the bamboo walls up around that area, and then of course got you know the toilet, the washing machine, the sink, and all that stuff. A mirror in there, um, and I've you know been kind of working with that, but I, it just looks really beautiful. And I added some uh, some of the there's some leaves that you can add or um, petals. I mean, for the cherry blossom petals, you can create those. And so if you run by them, like or they walk by them, that kind of rustles the the petals. So I've got that kind of going on in there too. So I'm trying to. Make it look really nice and, and everything. It's got kind of a cool. Japanese themed wall um, with that. It still looks like it's indoors, but more like there's a wall directed around like a hot bath, a hot onsen, you know, hot springs and stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I, I I forgot to mention actually earlier. Um, I did get KK yesterday morning. Awesome! Congratulations. 
Yeah, so that was cool, and he's gonna. Uh, I, I guess this isn't really a spoiler. He'll be back every Saturday night now, um, after you see him that first time. So, back to normal. Cool. I had Kix visit me today, so I was really happy to get him. He's he's one of my cool. favorite NPCs. Uh, one of my first villagers ever, and just uh, he was almost like a joke between my cousin and I. And just he was always a favorite. It was Bob, mm. and uh, thanks to Amiibo cards, I was able to get him to move in. Hmm. A couple days ago, and I was pretty happy about that. So, um, I got Cherry ported in with Amiibo cards. I'm hoping to pick in uh, to grab uh, the albino bunny. I cannot remember her name for the life of me. Yeah. Or his name, or, or whatever. I don't know what their genders are. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get that one next. Um, I don't really have anything else that's really that I care too much about as far as villagers go. Um, there's my three that. I like from past games, but I don't have those Amiibo cards, so I, I'm not really too like heartbroken if I don't get them. I think I got a new favorite in Caroline, mm-hmm. the squirrel. Nothing. Mm-hmm. I guess we're talking all about Animal Crossing now. I just kind of <laughs> remembered that, but uh, there was a couple other games I was playing. But I, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I mean, we can move on to something else. We we've, we've exhausted the Animal Crossing thing. Then we can move on to something else you've been playing. Um, I, I was just getting to thinking here because some things I've been working on, I don't know if you've done many of the designs. Um, I'm trying to work on some uh, more manual ones instead of using that website I have in the past. Mm-hmm. But one I'd put some time into that I thought was going to be like super easy, but those squared off little boxes um, or the grids, so to speak, mm-hmm. make some things harder than I thought it would be. Yeah, but I basically tried to recreate tie the Tasmanian tigers like shorts, you know, like the red with like the yellow flower looking things. Yeah, and it it kind of worked out. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I guess while I'm while I'm on that, just to kind of switch gears for a minute, I don't know, we may go back or something. We're just winging this, but um, I beat tie the Tasmanian tiger yesterday. Awesome. Um, on the switch, and I, I that was. That was pretty cool for me because I I didn't play it a ton back in the GameCube days. I rented it, but for whatever reason, it wasn't because I didn't like it. I just never owned it. But uh, and then of course a couple weeks ago we um, had John Passfield on here with us, and that was great. Um, super nice guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so that that was that was a lot of fun. It's a really good one. Um, of course I love 3D platformers, and it, there's parts of it that I guess shows its age. <laughs> but for someone who grew up in that time period anyway, I, it kind of doesn't bother me any. Mm. Um, but really, it, it's a it's a really solid one. Um, if you like that sort of game, you should probably go give it a shot. Um, I don't know if you've ever gotten to put much time into it before, but it's fun. No, I've never played it. I really um, like the, uh, the the theming of it, so to speak, and the aesthetic yeah. of it, and the, uh, the voice acting's fun. Um, mm the different boomerangs and all of that sort of thing. It feels different. Mm. Um, Does it feel like a GameCube game still? Yeah. Um, I, I would say so. It's, you know, obviously it's in HD now, but it, it, it feels a lot like a GameCube game. There's a couple of things there that's better than it was, I would say, back then. Now, I, I would say the biggest issue, if there was one, was probably the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, but that seems to be the problem with a lot of those, with a lot of 3D <laughs> platformers. Yeah, I've kind of grown used to that anyway. It's just it always feels different in different platformers, so I have to rethink, you know, how to control this thing. Mm-hmm. But I got used to it. Hmm. So what else you been playing? That? Much else? Oh, mm-hmm. go ahead. I'm sorry. And what else you been playing? Oh well, <laughs> other than that, I. Slowed down on it some because I, I wanted to get through Ty because um, I, I plan on writing some on it. But uh, Doom Eternal, of course, on my, my Xbox. But that's very hard with my daughter constantly home. Yep. And I, I just, I, obviously, I can't play that in front of her. Mm-hmm. And by the time she goes to bed, I don't really feel like playing something that hardcore <laughs> right now. I'm just tired. And then by the time I get up, like, I'll play it for 20 minutes, I feel like. And then it's like everybody starts waking up and it works <laughs> you know if you wake up at five in the morning to play it it's it's it can be a hardcore game to wake up to first thing in the morning and try to focus you know so if, that, uh, if only it was on the switch and you could play it in bed <laughs> yeah I, you know really that's one of those games i'm usually not like that but that's one of those that i really want 
their graphics and everything to be and for it to run as as well as it can. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's been good. It, it, it's a good one. I just wish I could put a little more focus into it. And, and actually, one more of that I just recently started playing. Um, I don't I don't know if they would want me to mention their name, so I'm not gonna say it. But um, a good friend of mine had recently picked me up uh, a hat and Tom. Yeah. And I started playing it yesterday, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's that's been good. I've been wanting to play that for a long time. Um, and my I uh, lost my train of thought there for a minute. My daughter jumped in as well with me, somewhat co-op, so that's been fun. Um, there's a few little hiccups we had with it, but I, I think it's going to be good. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting through that. I'm, I'm still not done. I beat Ty, but I'm not like I didn't find everything. And I said I wasn't going to, but I keep catching myself wanting to go back to that. So, <laughs> all this time home, I'm working, I promise, working from mm-hmm. home and everything. But, you know, with especially like today where I was kind of stuck on the couch most of the day, it, I, I just didn't have much else to do. So I was mm-hmm. game hopping a lot. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot out there right now. I don't know of much coming. Honestly, like it, with Nintendo's release window, I can't think of a whole lot offhand. I know I'm probably missing something. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm I'm glad for games like Animal Crossing that will last me. Um, mm-hmm. It's already really high up on my list of most played. Uh, yeah. I think some of that's just the time it came out. I think hands down it's going to be one of my most played games on Switch ever. It's just that's just what it is, and uh, it's like I I probably won't count it on my most played games list if at some point because it's just so ridiculous. Like it's just because it's something different. It's completely different from the games I usually play. It's it's a sure. lifestyle game almost, and so like you know eventually I'm gonna have to like part ways with Animal Crossing and I have to go back to work someday. You know, but yeah, right now it's like all that I'm dishing my time into. So, <laughs> um, worth it. Um, I'm enjoying it a lot, and uh, now uh, aside from that, um, I, d- I was in talks with uh, with uh, Underbite Games, I think is what they're called. Um, they're they're putting out Sentinels of Freedom. I'm a big Sentinels of the Multiverse fan, uh, so I talked with them. I was like, hey, you should send some codes the the way of uh, Nintendo Village. So, um, Josh, if you get the chance to pick up that code, I definitely recommend playing those. Uh, I love Sentinels of the Multiverse and, and the comic book stuff. So, <sighs> yeah. I- I, I saw you mention that today. I, I haven't got a chance to look into it, but yeah, it sounds interesting. Always like trying out different things. So yeah, that's something I'm really excited. I, I back Kickstarter, so I don't necessarily need a code for that, but um, I'm a big Sentinels fan. So I've been playing the Sentinels desktop or the card game that you can play it on mobile or Steam or what have you. I've been trying to get with my, my brother-in-law and play with him, but we've both been busy. So uh, hopefully we'll get to that soon here. Well, I think that brings us to about the end of the episode, unless you just want to talk about anything else. I know your your battery's starting to die on your your device there, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry. Um, no, you're good. Not not really. I mean, I could just sit here and go on and on about uh, <laughs> the different games and Animal Crossing. It's, you know, like I said, it's it's almost it's um it's getting to me a little bit because I'm used to being busy and not being at home very much and going wherever. And I'm constantly here with my daughter and my wife, and I love them. But I think sometimes we start driving each other crazy. <laughs> it's understandable. <laughs> but um, you know, you're creating a lot of nostalgia, though. And this is a oh, great yeah. time. Like, you know, there was a complaint, like, well, I'm always working all the time, so I don't have time to play games. And now it's like, you know, I'm actually home a lot more, and I can actually play games. And so you're creating those memories, like you did when you were a kid, and you had all the time on your hands. You know, so it's cool to, to create nostalgia again. Um, yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll always remember this, and Animal Crossing will always be, <laughs> kind of have a special place, you know, this uh, New Horizons. So, yeah, it, it's it's definitely cool. And, you know, the games we've played in the middle of it. Um, I, I don't know about you, but, like, certain games, even if I've played them, you know, 15 times since then, I'll still always think of, like, my life at that time period or what I was going through when I first played it most of the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like Donkey Kong Country, we talked about it not long ago. You know, I, I've played through that game a hundred times. And a lot of times I still think of when I was like five years old when it came out. And I, I would play it with my dad. You know, it's just whatever I did when I first played through that game, it kind of sticks with you. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Just a cool little way nostalgia works, I guess. Yeah. 
All right. Well, that brings us to the end of the episode. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, you can find our show um, at the Nintendo Village, uh, nintendovillage.com slash Nintendo Nostalgia on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and YouTube. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at Nintendo NOS, on our Twitter at Nintendo underscore NOS. Uh, you can also find us on our Instagram at Nintendo NOSIN. Choose an email at Nintendo Nostalgia IN at gmail.com. Um, we are uh, have the Patreon on hold right now. Um, we're not sure what we're going to do with that, especially with the way things are right now. And, and uh, so we'll, we'll hold off on that. Um, but we can always call in on the hotline uh, if you're bored and, uh, you know, sitting in quarantine and need something to do. Uh, call in with your nostalgic memories. Uh, 317-969-5690. Guys, that brings us to the end of the episode. Thank you so much for listening. And we will catch you next week. Later, Preston. Y'all later.